I need to make it clear that I have disclosures. Uh, so I've, uh, I receive uh, money for education from Wright Medical and for research from Wright Medical who make the latitude prosthesis. The elbow uh, um, is a pretty unique joint in that it has a, quite a small uh, contact surface area. It has um, long moment arms for the external forces applied across it, at very short moment arms for the stabilizers. And people often refer to the elbows as not being a load-bearing joint. Well, we all know that that, of course, is rubbish. Uh, and multiples of body weight go through your elbow when loading through the hand because of the long lever arms. The other really important myth to, uh, to dispel is that, is that uh, patients don't load their arms after we've done an elbow replacement. So despite uh, telling patients they can't lift more than two kilos uh, on a regular basis, uh, a nice study from, uh, from the Mayo Clinic has shown that actually 90% of patients participate in, in moderate le level activities, 40% perform high demand activities. And that's despite uh, three quarters of patients actually saying they remember being told, being given instruction and they adhere to the instructions that they were given. And the factors that correlate with more demanding activity, with patients participating in more demanding activities are, are male gender, surprise, surprise, uh, and uh, trauma or non-union surgery. What other factors affect uh, survival of our implants? Well, the initial, uh, the primary diagnosis, so, so they tend to do uh, less well in the post-trauma scenarios. Um, the uh, male gender, again, is an independent risk factor for poor survival of an implant, young age, uh, and then activity level. And probably activity level is a, is a surrogate for all of those factors above. If you look at uh, data within the UK uh, over the last, uh, since uh, 2012, when uh, data was collected in the National Joint Registry, you can see that the, the rates for... Um, uh, inflammatory arthropathy, arthropathy have remained fairly static, pretty high in the UK, about 50%, uh, which is not replicated in other places around the world. Similarly, levels for, of arthroplasty for osteoarthritis have, uh, have remained uh, fairly static. Trauma looks like it's slightly creeping up, but actually if you add in hemiarthroplasties being done for trauma uh, and combine those two, so uh, uh, total elbow arthroplasty for trauma and hemiarthroplasty for trauma, you can see that the rates of, uh, of uh, elbow arthroplasty are in, in trauma settings are increasing substantially in the UK. And that's been replicated in other developed nations. So uh, this is data from Finland uh, showing that the number of uh, distal humerus, uh, smashed distal humerus fractures increases over time. Um, and with the aging demographic, the rate of those smashed distal humeruses, which are not amenable to fixation, uh, will continue to rise. So why should we consider unlinked uh, elbow arthroplasty? Well, if you look at the bio, at it in a purely biomechanical sense, so on this uh, chart from uh, from Graham and King's group, um, linked is the linked implants are in red and unlinked are, are in blue, uh, and you look at the loads across the humeral stem in in uh, um, uh, various orientation. With the um, with the ligaments cut, there is. A significant, although marginal, uh, reduction in, in forces uh, across the humeral stem using an, an unlinked arthroplasty. If we keep the ligaments intact or repair the ligaments, then there is a significant uh, reduction in load across the, the humeral stem, uh, which in theory should increase the longevity of the implant and stop, uh, stop the implant from loosening. So potentially, uh, by uh, doing unlinked arthroplasty, we're going to absorb the forces across the elbow into the soft tissues and reduce the stress at the interfaces. But obviously, we need to counter that with, against the, the risk of instability. Uh, and that certainly remains an issue with, uh, with unlinked elbow arthroplasty. So when we start to look at outcome uh, or comparative outcome studies, uh, these uh, perceived advantages of unlinked uh, arthroplasty uh, uh, 
uh, are not uh, are not apparent when we look at revision as the outcome measure. So this study shows a worse uh, revision rate for unlinked arthroplasty. But if you look at the implants that are being used, these are historic implants. So it's not a, a, a reliable comparison for modern day implants that we use. In addition, revision isn't the only uh, mode of failure. So implants can fail without being revised. They can fail by loosening. And if you look at the ch this chart here and you look at the Coonrad Mori on the right hand side of the screen, although the revision rate is low, the implant loosening rate is, uh, is high and is comparable to something like the Suta Strathclyde. So revision isn't the only story. This is a uh, a, uh, a D-prosthesis that re had remained in for four, the, the patient's arm for 40 years, but clearly had failed a long, long time ago in terms of, uh, of implant loosening. So what we define as failure is, is very important. So what about more, more modern data, more modern implants? Well, if we look at uh, data from, from registries uh, using modern implants, here um, uh, the um, unlinked arthroplasties are in blue, linked are in red. Again, we start to think, well, maybe unlinked arthroplasty is not the way to go. Again, a greater revision rate. But dig deeper, uh, and what we can see is that that difference is almost entirely due to the kudo uh, prosthesis. If you look at the latitude prosthesis, um, uh, and the curve for that, it is absolutely equivalent to uh, the uh, discovery and the capital uh, um, column, the, the uh, sorry, the uh, Coonrad Mori implants. So um, the uh, the story may not be quite as grim for for unlinked arthroplasty uh, as historical data would uh, would have us believe. Are there any other advantages to, to unlinked arthroplasty? The, the data is fairly scant, but uh, there is a, a, a suggestion that the arc of movement may be greater with unlinked arthroplasty compared to linked. Uh, and there, there, you know, we can uh, make uh, sound arguments as to why that, uh, why that might be. So potentially uh, further advantages for that uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, improving the outcome for our, for our patients. As has already been very nicely uh, discussed by Deep Sea, uh, the uh, elbow arthroplasty is a soft tissue operation. It's a soft tissue operation with a bit of metal uh, stuck in the middle. And I think one of the key points about doing unlinked arthroplasty is that it enforces good soft tissue management and good balance. Even if you end up linking the implant at the end of the procedure, the discipline of ensuring you've got good soft tissue tension and good soft tissue balance will improve the longevity of your implant. And I use, uh, as we've already alluded to, this lateral parallelectron approach, which was nicely uh, illustrated by Graham King a few years ago. And this is not a paratricipital approach. It's an approach, essentially an extended boyd approach on the lateral border of the ulna, between ancaneus and the ulna, and then extending that proximally uh, through the triceps. Um, and, and this is a, just a brief video of a pre-dissection in the cadaver. Uh, and I, I take a little sliver of tendon off the medial border of triceps. There's the insight to decompression of the ulnar nerve. And then you elevate that off the medial uh, side of triceps, taking all the soft tissues, the, the ligaments and the tendons off the medial side, which will repair at the end. On the lateral side, we come a centimeter off the subcutaneous border of the ulna and then onto the ulna and elevate all the soft tissues around the lateral side. And then take out the soft, uh, the, the fat pad from the electron fossa. And then having done that, you can carefully dislocate the distal humerus. And then it's like working on a sawbone. Um, uh, and you can do all your humeral preparation. I know people can, are concerned about accessing the ulna, but with practice, you can get very good access. The important thing is that once you've reduced it, even without repairing the collaterals, because you've got good soft tissue tension, the elbow will be stable. And you'll find that when you do a total elbow replacement, even before you've repaired the soft tissues, you'll get a nice, uh, nice uh, restoration of, uh, of balance, assuming you've got the implant rotation right. 
implants should we use? Well, we've already heard about historical implants such as the D and the, the variety of implants that are available. But actually, the market is, has shrunk substantially over the years uh, we, uh, to where we have really only a, few, a select number of implants, either linked, unlinked, or, or convertible or linkable implants. It's really important to understand that there is a difference between linkage and constraint. Uh, and these terms are often used interchangeably and they shouldn't be because they are independent variables. So this chain is a linked device, but I can make any shape out of that chain because it is unconstrained. Similarly, the, the, uh, these two cups are unlinked. But when I put them together and I move one cup, there is one-to-one -one movement with the other cup because it is highly constrained. So don't use the term constrained to, to refer to linked implants because the, the terminology is, uh, is not comparable. If we look at historical uh, designs of, uh, of unlinked arthroplasty and look at the biomechanics of each compared to hum native human anatomy, you can see that some implants, such as the Sutostrathclyde, which is no longer on the market, was highly constrained and therefore tended to fail by implant uh, loosening or polyethylene wear. Whereas the Capitella condyla was, an, uh, was a, uh, a relatively unconstrained implant and that tended to fail by dislocation. So it's a matter of getting the balance of our, of our constraint right so that we have enough freedom of, uh, to allow the energy to be absorbed by the soft tissues, but not so much that, uh, that it uh, dislocates. Similarly, with linked implants, the morphology of the, uh, of the joint will affect the, the uh, constraint of the implant. And these are the most commonly used. So this is a Coonrad Mori design, the Discovery design, and then the um, Latitude design down at the bottom. Uh, and they you can change the way they behave by changing the uh, congruity of those articulations. This is data from Get Graham King's group, and he's obviously a designer of the uh, of the um, Latitude implant. But if we look at the way that they behave, these linked implants, the, the uh, discovery um, shows almost linear increase in torque with varus and valgus uh, angulation. And that's not necessarily a good thing because that would suggest it's acting a bit like a true hinge. Whereas the Coonrad Mori design and the Latitude design have very low increase in torque with angular displacement, 3.5 degrees either side of neutral. So they're acting as a, as a sloppy hinge. But as soon as you reach the limits of those in, uh, of the, the, the constraint, then the torque increases dramatically. And clearly by doing an unlinked uh, implant, what you're hoping is that you reduce that sudden increase in torque at the limits of, uh, of load. Similarly, the morphometries can affect the, the von Mises stresses across the uh, polyethylene and affect the wear. And the discovery designs and latitude designs have the lowest von Mises stresses. And the Coonrad Mori, as it used to be, had very high uh, peak von Mises stresses and these uh, corners the, of the polyethylene, which is why it tended to lead to polyethylene wear. In the next cell, they've rounded off these corners here and here to try and reduce the, uh, the von Mises stresses in those regions uh, so that we don't see this problem of, uh, of polyethylene wear and collapse into valgus as you can see here. But you can probably appreciate the other issue here is that the radial head is not, not articulating. It's floating in the breeze and therefore is not contributing to stability. So what do we do with the radial head? We can leave it in and maintain the articulation with a capitellum we can excise it. That's probably not a good thing if you're going to do it un unlinked, uh, or you can replace it. Um, and there are pro issues with, uh, with these three component uh, total elbow replacements. So it's definitely our preference to try and leave the native radial head in. And there are biomechanical studies showing that that is uh, advantageous uh, in, in total elbow arthroplasty, that you can, uh, ch uh, you can restore the, um, the angular displacement and the forces across the uh, joint somewhere close 
to, to the native joint by having the, the radial head uh, retained. So it's definitely worthwhile, worthwhile doing. And the last thing I just want to, to say is about how we put the implant in. You can have a very good implant. If it's put in badly, it's not gonna do well. And it's about rotational alignment and, and, uh, and uh, restoring the axis of rotation. Um, a number of studies have looked at different implants. We've looked at the latitude implant uh, and have shown that by just changing the humeral uh, anterior offset away from the native anterior offset, even by five millimeters, we can actually affect the functional outcome score, the DASH score reported by the patient significantly. So the closer we are to the native axis of rotation, the, the better the functional scores uh, for our patients. So why should we consider unlinked arthroplasty? Well, hopefully we can reduce torque at, uh, at uh, limits of, uh, of varus and valgus uh, loading. We can probably improve the range of movement for our patients. Can we slow stem loosening? It hasn't been proven, but in theory that should be the case. But there is a, pay, a price to pay and there will be an increase in instability issues uh, by going over to, to un, unlinked arthroplasty. But hopefully by, by switching to unlinked arthroplasty, we can avoid this situation. This is a 55 year old keen golfer who had this implant put in within a year without the presence of infection. He has a loose implant, and this is in a time of, uh, of uh, revision of a year, you can see the humoral component is loose, and that's what we want to avoid. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.